In today's episode, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're actually gonna try and destroy some vacuum tubes. <laughs> now that I say it out loud, it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but essentially what I really wanna to do today is I want to experience red plating. Red plating is something I've read about, but I've never actually done myself. And what is red plating? Well, it is where you're trying to move so many electrons through a vacuum tube that the plate itself starts to turn red. And that's because the electrons that are flying through the tube have some kinetic energy to them. And when you're trying to push too much current through that tube, the electrons striking the plate have so much kinetic energy that the plate itself starts to get hot. And when it gets hot, it starts to glow bright red. I've seen lots of cool pictures of this, but I've never experienced it myself. And the reason I've never experienced it myself is because all of the tube projects that I do are at really low voltages. It is nearly impossible, if not actually 100% impossible, to red plate a vacuum tube at just 24 volts. That's why I've never experienced it. So today I wanna to rectify that. I want to see a tube red plate. So I have a rather large transformer that's going to give us some nice high voltage and I've come up with a horrible, horrible piece of equipment to test this. I'm essentially trying to put the tube into the worst case scenario. I'm gonna put high voltage into the plate. I'm gonna connect the cathode directly to ground. No resistors anywhere. We're just gonna try and push as much current through the tube as possible and hopefully we'll see some glowing plates. I don't really know, but it should be pretty fun. So let's hop over to the bench, take a look at my rig, then we'll plug some tubes in and see what happens. So let's hop over there and get started. All right, here's my test rig that I'm uh, going to use to uh, <laughs> probably murder some vacuum tubes, uh, but hopefully it'll be fun. This was initially a failed project that I had started a year ago, and that's what this uh, the, the capacitor and the four huge diodes are over here on the right. So I just kind of repurposed those into this. And so these four diodes actually came out of golf cart battery chargers, so they are capable of some massive amp bridge. So the, uh, this full bridge rectifier here is way overkill for anything I'll ever need. So the way it's set up is that we have four inputs on the right here, and that corresponds to our two AC inputs that are on the left of our schematic here. So one of these is high voltage, one of these is low voltage. Uh, but we'll start with the high voltage side. Uh, I have 137 written on here, but I think I'm going to use a different winding of the transformer for a little higher voltage. But essentially we have our AC coming into our full bridge rectifier, coming out of that we have positive and negative, and we have a little capacitor uh, in the middle there to hopefully smooth it out just a little bit. Uh, this is only about a 40 microfarad, but the capacitor itself is rated to 450 volts. So it should be plenty for what we're doing, although in hindsight, I'm going to put so much load onto this uh, positive terminal here that a capacitor is probably a bad idea. I probably shouldn't have had a capacitor, but uh, I built it already and I'm not taking it out. <laughs> so if we burn the capacitor up, we burn the capacitor up. Now the high voltage that's coming out of that is going to go straight into the plate of our tube that we're testing. I am not gonna use a 6DJ8. Those are way too expensive. But uh, we come straight into the plate with our high voltage, no plate resistor at all and then the cathode will go straight to ground. No cathode resistor at all. This is essentially a worst case scenario for the vacuum tube. I think this is how we're gonna get some red plating happening because we're gonna be trying to move way more electrons than the tube is capable of moving, which should heat that plate right up. Now I wanna be able to kind of control it. And so we have the grid hooked up to a potentiometer over here, and that's where our low voltage supply is coming in, the 6.3 volts. Uh, now I chose 6.3 volts because, well, the transformer that I'm using has a 6.3 volt tap on it, and I wanted it to do double duty. So the first duty is that that 6.3 volts AC comes off and powers the filaments directly. And I just essentially run the wire straight from uh, this terminal on the right to this terminal on the left. 
Now coming off of those wires, we go into this little PCB here in the center. We have another full bridge rectifier, only this time the diodes are much smaller. Uh, and then we have a 470 microfarad capacitor to uh, smooth that out a little bit. Now we're connecting the positive output of our full bridge rectifier to the positive side of our capacitor and connecting that up to ground. So the negative side of our capacitor is connected up to the minus side of our full bridge rectifier here, and that should be negative volts. And uh, 6.3 volts rectified should be about eight and a half volts or so, and so that should be minus eight volts. And then we have a 50,000 ohm potentiometer that goes between that minus eight and a half volts and ground and then the center pin goes straight up to our grid. So we should be able to change the grid between minus eight volts and ground. And when the uh, grid is at ground with a uh, huge voltage on the plate, that should let enough electrons flow that we see some red plating. Now the transformer that I'm using for this is an old Tektronix transformer that I salvaged out of a dead Tektronix oscilloscope. I know it sounds like sacrilege to salvage a Tektronix oscilloscope, but a mouse had gotten inside of it and made an absolute wreck of it. The upside is that I have this awesome transformer and uh, it has a ton of different windings on it. Uh, we're going to use one of the 6.4 volt windings as our low voltage winding and we're going to use I think the 195 volt winding here which gives us 195 volts at 320 milliamps. These are the four tubes that we're going to test today. They're all triodes. We have a 6HA5 single triode, we have a 6J6 dual triode in a 7 pin package. We have a 6BZ7 which is a dual triode in a 9 pin package and then we have a 6 h 2 n e b This is a Russian dual triode. I think it can also be a 6N2P. Um, it depends on how you want to romanize the actual Cyrillic characters that are showing up. Uh, but it's just a regular dual triode in a 9-pin package. Now we're only going to test uh, these four tubes because I fully expect this process to be 100% destructive to the tubes. I'm not using ones that I use all the time or ones that are expensive like the 6DJ8. So let's plug these tubes into our test rig and see if we can't get some glow out of them. All right, this is the 6HA5. It's a tiny little seven pin single triode. There's really not a whole lot going on, just a uh, plate, grid, and cathode. And there's a, a little internal shield and the cathode actually comes out on two pins, which is why I've got uh, three wires going into the ground pin here on my hilarious contraption. So let's go ahead and kick this on and the filament should start warming up. I've got my knob turned all the way to the left here, so that should be minus eight volts going into the grid. So we shouldn't be getting any glow or anything untoward happening. All right, the cathode should be nice and warm and we've got a whole lot of high voltage sitting on the plate. So let's start turning up the grid here and see if we can't make it glow a little bit. All right, that's about minus four volts. I'm not seeing, yeah, I'm not seeing anything exciting happen yet. So let's just, uh, let's just send it. Let's go up to zero volts, see what happens. Oh, I saw something change in there. Oh man, I don't know if you guys can see that. When I hit zero volts, it slightly changes color. Oh, there it goes. I can see it. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Something happened. I'm not sure what happened, but all of a sudden the entire thing flared up. All right, so that's all the way back down to minus eight volts. Uh, and we can see that the, uh, the, <laughs> the plate is starting to cool off again. Um, so let's, let's crank it up again and see, see if we get that flare up again. All right, so that's all the way back up to zero volts. We can see that the plate is getting redder and redder. Look at that. That is red plating right there. We are red plating the way out of this tube. <laughs> How cool is that? Now, as I'm looking at it, it actually looks like the plate is getting dimmer and dimmer. So we may be seeing that the cathode is stripping itself here. We, we may be actively watching a tube destroy <laughs> itself here because now it looks like it's actually quiet dim. Wow. All right. That was, 
<laughs> that was really cool. I did not expect to see kind of nothing, 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 and then a massive flare up. Uh, and then we just kind of slowly <laughs> watched this tube have a slow death. <laughs> oh, wow, that was cool. All right, well, <laughs> this is fun. I'm not going to stop doing this. Let's pull out the next tube and take a look at it. All right, next up we've got the 6J6. This is a little seven pin dual triode. It's kind of rare to find a dual triode in a seven pin package. Uh, and they're able to do this because the two triodes share a cathode. So there's just one cathode between them. And that's uh, what we have hooked up to the ground here. Other than that, we've got both plates hooked up to high voltage and both grids hooked up to our control here in the middle. So uh, all that's left to do is to uh, turn it on and see what glows. All right, power's on. The filament, I can see, definitely warmed up nicely. The filament glows really bright on this one. It's uh, really cool. And actually, even though I've already got, I've got the, uh, the grid turned all the way down, I can see it's already red plating. So I don't have enough negative voltage to uh, prevent it from red plating. But let's, uh, let's crank it up and see what happens. That was interesting. As I cranked it up, maybe my potentiometer is not doing great. Uh, but yeah, because the red planing went 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 away right there. So let's um, yeah, let's let's turn it all the way up. Whoa! <laughs> I saw maybe a spark or a flash or something in the middle there. But wow, it is red plating like crazy. Look at how bright it is glowing. That is all of the electrons striking the plates so hard that the plates are heating up to the point that they're glowing bright red. How insane is that? And then we can turn it all the way down and our red plating goes away. So let's crank it all the way back up and see if we can get it to red plate again. Now that's interesting because I've, I've cranked it all the way up. So we should have uh, zero volts on our grid here and we're not red plating. So I think uh, that we may have possibly just totally stripped the cathode completely out of this one. That's wild. We've, we've totally killed this too. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> we killed the 6J6 now. Uh, that was awesome. It was a little short-lived, but uh, yeah, we, we managed to make it red plate. How cool is that? <laughs> All right, this is a 6H2NEB. It is a nine pin dual triode. There are uh, two plates, two grids, and two cathodes. And that's what we can see hooked up here. We've got our plates hooked up to the high voltage, our grids hooked up to our control, and our cathodes hooked up to ground here. And uh, pin number nine is an in internal shield, so that's also hooked up to ground. So let's turn on the power. We've got our potentiometer turned to minus eight volts. I can see the uh, filaments are warming up nicely. All right, I think everything's warm. Let's, uh, let's start cranking up the grid and see what happens. All right, there's about minus four volts. I don't see anything yet. That's all the way up to zero volts and I, man, I am seeing nothing. No red plating at all all that I can see. I mean, I've, I've, I have it sitting at zero volts. Nothing seems to be happening here. Yeah, well, I'm, you know, I'll call it at that. Uh, I didn't see any discoloration of the plate at all. I mean, there was, there was nothing going on there. So I, I, don't, I don't know, maybe this tube is better designed. It doesn't like the red plate. I just, man, I don't know. I, I don't know why some tubes red plate so easily and why some tubes absolutely refuse to red plate, but this one refuses to red plate. All right, this is a 6BZ7. This is a nine pin dual triode. It's actually uh, pin compatible with pretty much all six volt dual triodes like the uh, 6DJ8 or the ECC88 or pretty much any of those. Uh, so there's two plates, two grids, two cathodes and an internal shield. And so we have the uh, grids hooked up to our control here. We have our plates hooked up to our high voltage here and we have our cathodes hooked up to ground here. And I've got this, uh, all the way turned down to negative eight volts. So let's turn it on and see what happens. All right, let's turn the uh, grids up and see if we can get some red plating out of this thing. There's minus four volts. I've got nothing yet. Oh yeah, there we go. 
Oh, they're both red plate and nice and good. Let's turn them up to zero volts. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, so I, I think what happened there was that the, uh, the, the grid maybe got so hot that it created a short between the plate and the cathode. The plate itself may have been warping as well. I mean, there was so much heat in there. It was so bright. It had to have been warping and it, something warped enough to make a short. And that was what we saw the, the bright flash. So <laughs> this, this tube is most certainly dead. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, so there we have it. We saw some really great glow out of the uh, two seven pin tubes, the 6HA5 and the 6J6. Uh, we didn't see anything out of the Russian tube. It's really weird. I'm not sure why that one didn't want to glow. And I should mention that I actually tried this test on a spare couple of pentodes that I had, notably the 6AU6 and the 6CB6, and I couldn't get either of them to red plate either. So I'm not entirely sure why this, what I thought was a worst case scenario for vacuum tubes to cause some of them to red plate really brightly and some of them to not red plate at all. So there's a lot more going on here that I don't quite understand. Uh, but what I do understand most of all is that the 6BZ7 here was by far the most interesting tube that we did. Uh, it red plated very, very brightly, almost immediately, and then something warped on the inside and made a short and we got that awesome little flash. Uh, but this tube is now 1000% dead. There is absolutely no saving it. As a matter of fact, I don't think there's any saving of any of the tubes here, but the point of this was to have a little bit of fun and see if we couldn't get some good images of red plating. And I think we succeeded pretty well at that. So as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I read every single comment and I try to reply to every single one of them. Also, if you would like to have a more freeform type conversation, I do have a Discord chat server for this channel and I'm pretty active on that chat server. So if you wanna to talk to me through a more real time manner, definitely check out the Discord server, hit us up on there. There's a ton of really smart people in there and I love seeing everybody's projects. So hop over there, share some of your stuff and maybe we can have a cool conversation about red plating vacuum tubes. Uh, but either way, I had a ton of fun today. This was, Hilarious. I did not expect to see a short and a bright flash out of the 6BZ7. That was awesome. It was really, really cool. So thank you guys so much for watching and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next episode.